Oops. Yeah. Uh, function of ah, the last. You mean the last one? Yeah, you had one. Yeah, as a function of intensity, I think you had. Um, no, go back. No, one of, more slide, I think. Is it? Oh, darn it. This is for the for the constant intensity case. Anyway, I'm, no, no, I'm no, no, certain no. that it was a, that there were pretty much straight lines. So my question was, um, can you simply can you just make analytic approximations by doing asymptotic expansions in intensity and get closed form analytic solutions? I, I, I didn't try. Maybe, maybe you can do it. Uh, but you mean in the nonlinear problem to just to go to a linear thing to linearize by using asymptotics? Yes, it's intensity. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe you can do it. Nice idea, but I didn't do it. So uh, maybe anyway, uh, Sebastian, I don't see much difference between linear and nonlinear, so that maybe there is some correction, but uh, the linear is, this asymptotic expansion will be in between linear and nonlinear, and I think it will be very close to each other. Mm -hmm. these little carry things and the counterparty risk and make sure that whatever mark you get uh, reflects all these things. So doing a simplification or linearization would not be acceptable for the purpose for which the model was created. I don't mean linearize like stock price. Any other question? Chris. Um, it was, uh, I was just thinking in Nicole's talk, um, I mean, is there some possibility of a diffusion limit of these um, Hawks processes, self-exciting processes? Because you have the sort of the branching structure, and of course there's the fellow diffusions that come out as limits of branching processes. Um, some of it looked like it might be going in that direction. Yes, uh, I think that is uh, possible. In general, when we speak about uh, asymptotic limits, it's uh, when it's uh, asymptotic. Uh, excuse me. We have two kind of asymptotics. When the number of the population is uh, large, hmm, even in the very nonlinear case, and there is beautiful result of C uh, V milliard and so on. Hmm, and if not, we can have uh, some uh, kind of convergence to effectively to. Uh, limit processes, but also in the more uh, financial application uh, in uh, different work, we can have the stochastic part hmm, uh, with exogen in the, in the gen shop, plus uh, in place of uh, mu bar, the deterministic, uh, we can introduce some uh, CIR or uh, affine models in view of the calculation, mm, anything is very related to, to the affine structure. Mm. Mm. That is, um, but um, it's depending essentially. Um, the problem in, in a lot of cases, but that is also the problem with the CV, DV, and so on, is the, prob is the problem of the aggregation of the portfolio. Because uh, in the past, for example, we tried to give a upper price of uh, a bond from the derivative pricing. But uh, people say to me, uh, for us, it's not useful. Hmm? Because uh, every day, because uh, if you have specific rule for a specific contract in some sense, it's uh, very complicated to, to aggregate the portfolio every day in the books. Hmm? And... Uh, um, that, and in particular, uh, the problem is you will consider the CV DV for one product, mm -hmm. and after that, what is the how do you uh, calculate uh, the exposure of the aggregate book? It's very complicated. But also, another uh, difficulty is, uh, in fact, the gestion of the uh, CV or credit risk uh, is uh, external. Is, uh, 
that is characteristic of the dilemma, enfin, of the finan individual financial product, that is a trader in some sense, edge, individually the product. But uh, for the problem as CVA, DVA, enfin, CVA, DVA, in fact, hmm, the, the risk is uh, dedicated to the desk of CVA, hmm, that is uh, aggregated all the exposure of different contracts in the bank. Hmm, and that is a new, in some sense, in reference to the derivatives market, because uh, this part is not, in fact, uh, managed di uh, individually by the trader, for example. Okay, just yeah, to conclude, I will make a short... I, I have a question. <laughs> Why do you want to conclude without my question? You just have your question. Okay, so it's, you just get one question. What is this like? How many questions do you get? Is this like, do I have to pay to get this next question? Okay. You, you promised earlier it was your last Listen, question. The problem with CVA and, and, and well, XK, okay. I'll tell you what it is. The problem is that Banks don't want to collateralize their trades because it would cost too much. Okay. Therefore, they have invented a method which they, quote unquote, take uh, an indirect haircut. That's why the models have to be, have all the bells and whistles in case a regulator ever comes in and asks. But the point is that this is, un unfortunately, I think that what Nicole said is that it introduces a complexity in finance which perhaps we should, I mean, it's, it's very, it's, it introduces complexity. And complexity is never good. Yeah. And also it makes it that you can't mark a book because instead of saying this costs, you can't look in Bloomberg for the price. To look into Bloomberg and then you have to like solve a lot of PDEs and then say, well, it's a little more, it's a little yeah. less. You know, that's the problem. And that's my remark. You should not introduce complexity into finance. Comple and not, I'm not saying... No, no. Your, your talk was excellent, by the way, I learned a lot. But it's just saying that, that I think that there's a problem with, with in the future with this business. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will conclude just by making a short comment, which is that actually an interesting um, mechanism which is linking the two talks, it is this branching process. And like Henri Labordeur has been using extension of McKean's work to deal with nonlinear uh, PDEs mm -hmm. as well. And so I think it's a very promising uh, field. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's uh, thank the, the speakers again.